Yo, we hit 5k subscribers and I want to thank you guys so much for all of your support. We finally did it. Thank you guys so much. And for the 5k special video, I asked you guys what you would like to see for a special video. Now, most of you voted for a Q&A video. And I asked you guys, if you have any questions for me, whether that's about gaming or personal, you can leave them in the comments. And you guys definitely delivered. So, in this video, we will be answering these questions. And we have one part that will be gaming related. And then the other part will be more personal. So, let's hop into the video and I hope you enjoy. First question is from Dibar Yatar Dar Dar. Um, I'm sorry, I just butchered the name. I'm really, really sorry. Asked, how did you get into gaming? Well, gaming has always kind of been a part of me. I grew up with games. Uh, you know, it started off with Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Nintendo 64, that kind of stuff, more console side. But when I was around 11 or 12 years old, my parents actually bought a computer, and that's when I first started to get into computer gaming. My first shooter game was called the game S4 League. It was a third person anime shooter, very, very fast paced. And it was kind of like a ball game where you had to score touchdowns. I don't know if any of you guys know this game. Let me know if you, in the comments down below if you do, because that game was amazing. Anyway, uh, and yeah, from there on out, I started playing other games like League of Legends as well. And uh, yeah, a bunch of other games that I can't remember right now, but PC gaming for the win. Ahmed Usman asked me, what other games do you play apart from Bloodstrike? Well, uh, at the moment, I mainly play Bloodstrike because I'm not really interested in that many other games. But I do have a few games uh, that are coming out soon that I will give a try. And I will also make videos about them, so keep an eye out for that. But recently, games that I've played that are not Bloodstrike are Chained Together, Little Kitty Big City, Fortnite sometimes, Valorant. League of Legends, those are the kind of games that I would play offline, but again, I have not been playing them recently because I just don't have the time for it. Alright, Noir asked me, let's see, what can I ask, how long have you been doing YouTube? Before I was a YouTuber, I was mainly a streamer. Back in 2018, that's where my streaming journey started. And back in that day, I was only doing Twitch, pretty much. I was not looking at YouTube, I wasn't making any videos. Sometimes I would have like a best of moments posted on my YouTube channel or maybe like a, a one gameplay, but I wasn't doing it consistently and it was not worth mentioning. I do have a list of unlisted videos uh, from, you know, young me, uh, which I'm not gonna show you guys, but um, I started doing YouTube very seriously starting in November 2023. And ever since I've been learning, I've been growing, um, you know, it's been a journey. What they say about making YouTube videos and growing your channel is true. The more videos you make, the more you will learn. Because in November 2023, I did not know what I was doing. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Like, I was just uploading a full gameplay, just put a title on it and slap a thumbnail together and that was it. You know, no editing done, no like thinking about like, hey, is this what people are, you know, gonna like watching? So the more you do, the more you learn. And, you know, as time went on, I started to think more about, like, okay, why are people not watching my videos? Is it because the gameplay is bad? Is it because it's boring to watch? Maybe the title is not good? Maybe people are just not clicking on the thumbnails? And the more you start asking yourself these kind of questions, the more you start learning. And, uh, yeah, it's been a crazy journey. Alright, uh, MV Perara, he asked, If you are a Bloodstrike developer, what changes would you make? Well, the first thing that I would change, and I'm not kidding, like, straight off the bat, the biggest change for me that Bloodstrike needs to make is to make cross-region play available. We already have cross-play, meaning that PC players can play with mobile players, not a problem. But if someone is from a different region, you know, I'm from Europe and I want to play with my North American friends, I cannot do that with my main account. And that is something super, super frustrating because when you're playing games, games will become better and a better experience if you can play with your friends. And I don't know why NetEase does not want to make cross-region available. Um, I think it might be a matter of money because I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but like, you know, if you if you want to play on a different region, basically you have to make a new account. And if you want skins or anything on there, then you're going to have to buy it all over again, which most people, I got to say, don't do. So like, I don't really see why they're so hesitant about it. Maybe there's some other like secret things that we don't know about it, but who knows? Okay, we have three questions from Mr. Automophiles, which is, what are your favorite weapons? So my favorite weapons, uh, if I'm trying is aka p90 if i'm just uh, playing for fun my favorite weapons are bow 
M700s, uh, MP155, even though it's been nerfed, I really, really love that gun. Second question from this person is, what is your favorite weapon skin? Now, honestly, this is a super, super hard one to answer, but I do have one skin in mind that I really, really want, and unfortunately, it is not up for purchase. It is called the Golden Butterfly Knife, and only a few content creators have it because they actually won it through a contest. Now, there is a contest running right now, and I am participating in it, so I'm really, really hoping to get it, but this is one skin that I really, really want it looks absolutely amazing third question from this person is what are your future plans as a content creator well first of all it's a bit of a vague question because there's so much things to say about that but my future plans as a content creator uh, is to one always uh, you know try to make quality content and improve my skills in it uh, I think that's one uh, two I still want to be having fun while making content uh, because you know Making content while you're not having fun, you know, people will, will be able to tell. Uh, and number three is, of course, I want to grow my channel, but also I'm not looking to be, you know, the next ninja or uh, the next Pokemane or whatever, you know. I'm just doing my own thing. I'm having fun with it. I'm vibing with people. And as long as people enjoy the content, that's cool. As for my future plans in regards to content, uh, I am planning on making some more unique concepts. So basically... You know, obviously, I will still be uploading gameplay, and yes, I will be covering the new skins and the news and that kind of stuff. But I also really, really want to bring out some more unique content, like for example, the prison uh, video where you know we make custom rooms, we have a concept, we bring everyone in, and we have a good time. And I think those things are really, really fun. It involves not only like fellow content creators, but also it involves you guys. And I think that's such a good experience. Okay, next question is from Astro. What do you like better, Bloodstrike or Farlight 84? Now, this is actually a trick question because, and I will tell you why. If Farlight 84 was in the state from December, 2023, around that date, like I would 100% pick Farlight 84 over Bloodstrike. I'm not even joking. Like it, it would be a no brainer, right? But in the current state of Farlight 84, uh, I would take Bloodstrike any day. Like, honestly, Farlight 84 is in such a bad state and slow state. Um, I just can't get myself to play the game or even enjoy it. And trust me, I tried because in a re recent video from Fadu, I was actually playing with him and I tried to have fun. And yes, I was having a good time because I was playing with my friend, but not because I was playing the game. So the next question is from someone, I can't see their name. Uh, it says, hey lights, I don't have much to ask, but I just have one question. What would you do if you didn't start your YouTube journey and please can you make horror game videos? What would I do if I didn't start my YouTube journey? I would probably still be playing games and streaming to twitch and uh, yeah just continue life next to that and can you make horror games video no 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 <laughs> i am actually guys I, this is something that a lot of people don't know about me but like i struggle watching horror movies like i really struggle you know like when there's a scary moment i, I will like you know like I, I will try to like mute the sound and sometimes uh, i will scream and i'll be like Bro, I, I am the worst with horror movies, let alone video games. So, no, that's not happening ever, 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 ever. Okay, maybe it will happen if we hit 10k. <laughs> Flashback. Ah! Oh my god. Why is it so far? Uh, Rusty Rambo says, what motivated you to keep going when you had less subscribers, say, like, below 100? So, that is actually a very good question, because a couple of months ago, uh, I was definitely, like, I had way less views, and, uh, I was way, you know, less known. To me, it's not all about numbers, you know? Uh, when something is not going the way you want it to go, I often ask myself, why is it not going well? Okay, why are people not watching my videos? Why... Are people not clicking on my videos? Why are people not watching that long? Those are kind of the questions that you need to ask yourself if you want to start on YouTube, uh, you know, and it helps you improve on your own content, okay? Uh, so my motivation was more like, why are people not watching? And then I would learn. And 
from that learning experience, you can see things either improving or going bad or, you know, see that much difference. And honestly, th this is a weird thing to say, but like, because things are not going good, it will motivate me to do better. Next question is from Noob World Gaming. What motivated you to make YouTube videos? So that's a very good question because I initially was a streamer in 2018 and I would never upload things to YouTube, right? I was just live streaming, start stream, have a good time, stop streaming, then I would hop off. Over the past few years, while I was streaming on Twitch, uh, I never really thought about making YouTube, YouTube content. Now that changed, okay? <laughs> Dude, this is gonna be a hard story to tell. But anyway, I was live streaming, you know, 2018, 2022. In 2022, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, this was the worst year of my life. A lot of things happened. Uh, I almost became blind. Uh, which was absolutely crazy. Uh, I spent a lot of time in the hospital. Also had a surgery done where they put like a metal tube on my optic nerve, which is crazy. And now you guys know why I have aim hacks. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But anyway, uh, it was a very rough year uh, with my health. Uh, you know, it was absolutely no joke. Um, on top of that, I had some personal struggles in real life uh, with uh, close family members uh, passing away, uh, including my grandmother and my little sister. So 2022 was a horrible year for me. 2023, I was still kind of like recovering from 2022. And at the end of 2022, uh, sorry, at the end of 2023, sorry, um, I discovered this game called Farlight 84. And this game gave me the motivation to start streaming again. Because obviously with my mental health not being good, with my physical health not being good, I was not really in the mood or had the time to, you know, push myself to make content. And Farlight 84 brought that spark back. Um, and it was amazing. You know, I started making streams again. And then I was like, okay, why not try YouTube again? You know, like I never really tried it. And I was like, okay, let's go. Let's do it. And, you know, I started off and I didn't quite understand it. Um, but as time went on, I started learning things, you know, learning things about YouTube, learning things about making thumbnails, learning things about editing. And the more things you learn, the more satisfying it is, or at least it is for me, you know, like I love learning things and seeing like improvement. It's, it's like that with games as well. When I play games, the most satisfying part about playing games is getting good at a game, but not just getting good, but like getting really, really good. And the same applies uh, with, kind of like with my YouTube journey, you know, like I was really bad. I improved a little, then I improved more. And, you know, we're at a point where, you know, yes, the videos are decent quality. Some people might say good, uh, but I don't want to get ahead of myself. And I know I can still do better, you know, I know I can still do better. So. Yeah, that kind of like motivation to uh, create and improve and, uh, you know, also, you know, have people enjoy my content, letting me know like, hey, that was really funny or that was really cool. Or, you know, having people like join my discord, doing movie nights, having people join our clan, seeing that other people, even without me being there, can find each other through our community and play games together. Now that is just like if there's if there's anything motivating, then that's it. Alright, uh Karan asked me why did you choose Bloodstrike when there were barely any YouTubers and content? Now I didn't really choose Bloodstrike. And that's actually a weird thing to say, but um a while ago I made a video Bloodstrike versus Farlight 84, and that was at the point where I was I need to stop playing Farlight. And I saw a lot of people move to Bloodstrike, and I wanted to know what the hype was about. And at first, I wasn't really convinced. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I was like, oh, bro, this is kind of boring. Like, I'm playing as bots. And then finally, I challenged myself from a bronze to legend challenge in like the least time possible. And when I did that, I started to appreciate the game. And that's when I was like, okay, this game is actually good. Let's keep on playing it. All right. Itachi Anime asks, have you become a Bloodstrike partner? Uh, the answer to that is no, but I hope to be. I've applied to the partner program. I hope at some point that they can review it. Um, something that I would really, really love to do with Bloodstrike is, um, you know, host fun custom rooms, maybe even host special tournaments, uh, do some casting. I, I really have a lot of creative ideas in mind. 
and it would be amazing to have support from netties on that side especially for prize pools you know um, it'd be really really cool to do like a major hide and seek event for example with a cash prize on it you know like top 10 people get gold and like not just a little gold you know like actually like a decent amount um having to pay that from my own pocket is pretty hard so uh yeah i am hoping to get some kind of partnership with blood strike not for myself like actually not for myself i don't care about getting paid or or that kind of stuff i, I generally want to do fun stuff with the people from the community now we are gonna hop into the more personal questions and dude, there is two questions that have been coming back over and over and over again first question being how old am i and the second question being am i single well let's just dive into the questions and then you we will find out what's what <laughs> how old am i i usually i would say how old do you think i am uh but in this case you know this is just a one-way video so anyway i will just you know spoil you guys uh, i was born the 30th of march in 1996 making me 28 years old at the making of this video second most common question is are you single no i am not and I want to tell a little story behind this because I think it's a really, really cool story. And it just shows how far love can go. <laughs> oh my God, we're going to get cheesy. So in 2018, I was streaming this game called Paladins Champions of the Realm. I was part of their partner program and I was invited to a meetup uh, where they would invite other content creators, viewers, uh, community members all all sorts of people uh, so i decided wow that's super cool so i'm gonna go there that's only like once in a lifetime that they hosted in belgium in brussels so i went there and um i met so many amazing people fellow content creators and i also met someone in particular there he at the time was uh the community manager of the game and he was basically the person that's been sending me uh redeem codes and that kind of stuff as part of the partner program and I did not know that was him. And we started talking and I was like, wait, who are you? And he's like, wait, who are you? So we didn't really, we actually knew each other without knowing each other. And um, yeah, the rest is history. It was kind of uh, love at first sight, even though I, me before thought that love at first sight doesn't exist. It does exist. Because that evening when I went home, I was like, wow, that guy's actually, that was such a nice guy. It was so nice talking to him. Like, you know, you could like really relate and stuff. Back at the time, like, you know, things were complicated. I was living in Belgium. He was living in the UK. Uh, we didn't get together until like after a few other times where I had to travel to go to conventions and that kind of stuff. And, you know, at some point we were like, okay, you're feeling it. I'm feeling it. Let's do this. So for about one year, we had a long distance relationship. And after that one year, we were like, screw it, we're gonna move in together. And we did. I actually moved from Belgium all the way to the UK and we lived there. And luckily I did it at the time that we did because two weeks after I arrived in the UK, it was COVID times and the borders were closed. If I had not moved in at that time, then we would probably not be together anymore. Not gonna lie to you. So yeah, the rest is history. <laughs> Uh, we have a question from Q Wilski. He asked, what was your dream job as a kid and do you have plans other than being a YouTuber? My dream job as a kid was being a teacher. I would like, as a kid, I was so, so eager to be a teacher. I don't know why. I was like, that's what I want to be. I want to teach kids. And then I got into high school and I got so traumatized that I was like, frick this shit, I'm out, bro. I don't want to be a teacher anymore. <laughs> Anyway, uh, do you have other plans of being a YouTuber? Uh, yes. Uh, I mean, YouTubing, being a YouTuber is not my main job. Uh, being a YouTuber is kind of like a hobby for me and a side gig that I do, uh, but it's not my main job, which follows me up to someone else's question. I see Williams asked me, what do you do for a normal job? So I work as a data analyst for an IT marketing company. Now, I don't want to go too much into details as to what I do or who I work for, because, you know, that's kind of personal. And, you know, for privacy reasons, obviously, I cannot reveal everything. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I work for 40 hours a week, full time. Next to that, I do YouTube. And next to that, I sleep. That's it. No, more <laughs> no time for other things. Uh, some people ask me, what is your real name? Uh, so my real name is Jasmina, or most people in real life call me just Jazz. Uh, in uh, Arabic, that would be Yasmina. 
or in Dutch Yasmina or in French uh, Yasmina. There you go. Some people will also ask me in the comments down below uh, how many languages I speak. So my native language is actually Dutch. Uh, that is my most fluent language. Uh, I mean, it's my my pretty much the, the, the language I grew up with. Um, second language would be English, then it would be French, and then it would be Arabic. Uh, so yeah, I do speak a lot of languages, um, naturally, because currently I am living in France. So yeah, I did make a, a video once where I did an intro in Arabic, so you know, good luck finding it. Uh, and then someone also asked me, are you from South Africa? Because you sound like South African. Well, I think the Dutch accent has to do with that. Um, yeah, I mean, I think Dutch and South African, they we do have a few words similar to each other. That we will kind of understand but uh yeah bro and then the final question is can you show us your setup yes i will show you guys my setup but before i do thank you guys so much for watching this video i really appreciate it thank you guys so much for all the support thank you for the 5k subs and i hope you enjoy this video take care guys and i'll see you soon bye bye